It's Eva, and for those of you who are new here, this is my food channel, which is actually the side channel of my main channel. Kind of confusing, I'm sorry. But this is the series where I pick things that I find off Instagram which are trending or just really cool in general, and I recreate them in my own way. So for this video, I really want to make these cheesecake pops that I actually found from Heirloom Toronto. And obviously, this is just a recreation. It might not even taste like the original. I've never tried the original, so I'll always, always, always try to support the original one. If I do ever get a chance to go there and try some, I definitely will grab one. But for now, this is my recreation, and hopefully it's decent. I'm gonna have to try it at the end of the video, so just watch the process and stick to the end if you wanna see me try it out. Starting off, I'm just making a mini basic cheesecake with a regular Philadelphia cheesecake recipe that I will link in the description box. I just used one fourth of the ingredients because I didn't want a huge cheesecake. I'm also using animal crackers as a base because I thought they were Teddy Grahams for a really good price, but they're not, so don't make the same mistake I did. As for crumbling it, you can use a food processor or smash it and roll it out into small crumbs like I am. I would recommend smaller crumbs, but at that point, I'm not gonna lie, I got really tired with smashing it. Now in a clean bowl, pour the crumbs in and add your sugar and butter and then combine. I'm using my hands because it's easier, but use whatever you need to. If you hate touching the stuff, you can use gloves as well, especially if you're making it for a lot of people. When the crumbs start to come together when you squeeze them, they're good to go for the next step. I don't have a small springform cake pan, so I just use my regular methods and line the entire cake pan with baking paper so it's easy to take out. The top sticking out are used for easy lifting to remove it. But all you have to do is just pour the mixture in and start packing it down at the bottom with pressure. You can also use a can or something with a flask service to help you out. Next is the cheese portion. In a separate bowl, add in a block of softened cream cheese vanilla, and sugar. Mix it around a bit and then add egg and mix again. It's definitely also easier to get rid of the chunks with an electric mixer. When the mixture is smooth, pour it into the cake pan. At this point, I realized I forgot the flour in the recipe and it was too late to go back, but it's okay, we're done in the end. Level it out and take out air bubbles by giving it a little shake and a few taps. Then bake it at 375 degrees until a toothpick comes out clean or according to directions. I will admit, I lost track of time and burned the tops of my cheesecake, it happens! But I just cut it off and cut the cake into 8 slices as even as possible. It was a little bumpy on top, but it's okay because we are going to be covering it with chocolate anyways. Now melt some chocolate chips. You don't need too much at this point because we just need it to act as glue. Dip a popsicle or lollipop stick or some kind of skewer strong enough to hold the cheesecakes up into the chocolates and then halfway up the cheesecake slice. And then just leave it to set on the side. Melt more chocolate chips down. If you need to, add a little bit of a neutral oil in until it's thin enough to run off and coat the cheesecake. Coat the cheesecake with chocolate and place it on a non-stick surface or baking paper to cool. It'll help the chocolate set if your cheesecake is cold from being in the fridge. Now for the fun part, decorating. This is totally up to you. Heirloom Toronto has a huge variety of toppings. Like if you look up the videos on Instagram, it's crazy what type of things they put on it. I'm just using whatever I have in my pantry. So a few drizzles of chocolate, some walnut pieces, pumpkin seeds, animal crackers, and even crumbled ones. When you're done, just let it sit in the fridge and let's get on to the testing. Okay, so here it is, these cheesecake pops. I'm actually so happy with how they turned out, considering the fact that I did kind of burn my cheesecake and have to shave off of it, and it did look really ugly for a second, but this is it. I did freeze it though, so it might be kind of solid. 
because I, I don't know, I'm just impatient when it comes to waiting for chocolate to defrost. But I guess let's just try this still now. Mm. Yeah, this is good. Surprisingly, this cheesecake recipe is actually really good. Sorry, I'm like drooling. <laughs> Matt, stop salivating, please. I know you want to eat more, but just stop. Okay, so overall, I'm so happy with how everything turned out. It actually tastes amazing. Like, I want to try the original one right now to see, like, how good it is. Obviously, I feel like it's better because they make a living off of making these. Like, come on. Me, I'm just an average person at home. But I'm actually really surprised that that cheesecake recipe actually tastes good because usually, like, really basic ones, I feel like, from, like, some brands, they, they seem kind of, like, meh. And, like, I looked at the ingredients and I was like, meh. I don't know if it'll taste good, but that cheesecake recipe is actually really good. I do also like the chocolate, though I would probably use a little less chocolate because it's a little bit too much for me, but then again, it's up to you. If you guys do try this recipe, please show me because I want to see pictures and I want to see how you guys decorate it and what toppings you guys used. If you guys aren't subscribed, please make sure that you are with the notification bell ticked down below. Also, please leave a like if you haven't so I know to continue this series and know that you guys like this series. And comment down below letting me know what you guys want to see me recreate next time and maybe I'll just do it. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!